Hey guys, it's CSPN001 here, welcoming you to part three of Let's Play Resident Evil 4. Last time, we went into the village and cheated our way through a fight. As you see here, I am currently saving at my typewriter. It marks how many saves you've taken, your total time, what round you're on, because you can start a new game plus every time you beat the game with all your old equipment. More on that later. And it's on normal difficulty mode. As you saw up there, my cleared game for professional difficulty. So I am not lying, but I, I actually just finished that like yesterday and I don't have any plans to do a new game plus. Partially because I sold like all of my crap before the final boss fight so I could buy a few upgrades and a rocket launcher. But more on that when we get to the later point of this game. So now we're going to run through a gate. Uh, this game really is well known also in the survival horror genre for introducing the quick time events. I think, if I remember correctly, there were some quick time event stuff in like Resident Evil 3 where you would have to quickly make a choice on what to do to escape from Nemesis. But this game really starts to abuse the quick time events and then 5 and 6 aren't much better in that sense. Uh, now that we have done that, we are going to uh, shoot that. I know it's a couple spinels, but 2,000 points for two bullets for the handgun is really not that big a deal. Even at this point in the game, because we've got a fairly large amount of handgun ammo for the moment. Uh, up here, we're going to have these guys, dynamite guys. They are not fun to fight, because points shown right there. They will throw sticks of dynamite at you, and if that dynamite hits you, you're gonna get a nasty explosion in your face, and on professional, that usually results in your death. Oh crap, uh, bear traps. That's one of the problems. Stop throwing dynamite for two seconds, will you? Dynamite, like, really hurts you on professional, but you can sort of run away from it on regular. Point shown right there. He just suicide bombed. What the heck? I don't think I've ever seen that before. That guy, I think, just suicide bombed me. I swear, I have never seen that in three and a half playthroughs of this game. I have never seen that happen. Well, that was actually a pretty cool death because, like I just said, I have never seen one of them truly suicide bomb like that. And it's kind of funny because they can actually kill themselves and each other with their own weapons. Like, if you manage to trick them into walking into each other's, like, dynamite and stuff, you can actually make them kill themselves. You can probably... That's why I didn't want to walk in there. Where is he? Blow that up and that up, because I don't trust myself to not get blown up in the face. I uh, never stand near one of these guys when they're, once they die, if they're holding a block of dynamite. It will not hurt you until they die, and now run, because it will blow up in your face, just like that. Huh? So it was one of the others that threw it at me. That was not good. Uh, let's use it, just so I can use it and go ahead and extend my maximum health just a little bit. So this game is, of course, well, widely recognized as one of the greatest survival horror games of all time. And it's believed by many... Oh, come on! That wasn't even close to me! It's believed by many to be the best game in the series, and I am actually in that boat owned. I am in that boat of believing that this is the best Resident Evil game. Because it really, it's nice because it's not like the later Resident Evils where, it's not like in 5 and 6 where 5 and 6 really just don't feel like the oldest games. Yet 5 and 6 really weren't good for her because of that, but also of course, a lot of people didn't like, you know, 1, 2, and 3 because of how puzzle-based they were and just the extremely limited amount of equipment you had in those games. This game was really a nice balance because 5 could really be broken really easily once you had infinite ammunition and stuff. And 6 just doesn't even really feel that much like a survival horror game. It feels a lot more like a shooter. 
and like I said, the first three were really more about surviving and puzzles and not as much about killing. But this game has a pretty good mix of feeling like a survival horror game and making you feel desperate at times, while never with that overwhelming difficulty that the originals could have. So as you can see by the map, we need to go in here. A little bit of money. There is a treasure in this area, I'm just not sure exactly where it is because I always forget to go back and get it even though it would be helpful. I'm looking for a bird's nest because quite often there's stuff hidden in- oh, there's one. Maybe that's where it is. Oh yes, that is it! The red cat's eye, I believe. Yep. That's what I'm always missing. That is a treasure that I'm always missing. That one is a lot more valuable and you'll see why a little bit later on. Actually, I might go ahead and show you guys something with that. If you go to key treasures, certain treasures can be combined. The, the cat size, red, yellow, and green combined with the beer stein. Treasures will carry over between playthroughs as well, but you know, that's just something I just wanted to show you guys, I guess. Uh, we're not gonna save. I don't really feel like saving right now. Unfortunately, there's no way to avoid these without shooting them or running straight into them. But naturally, running straight into them is not a very good idea unless you have a death wish. And on professional, I think it's generally a one-hit kill. Not always on regular, but yeah. Uh, we'll walk through here. And into here, nothing there. Is there anything in this one? No, there is not. Uh, let's reload. And let's open up the case for a cutscene. This game, they've got a very good sense of humor, as you saw. Okay, so, end of chapter 1-1. One, 72% one. accuracy, 72% total, 21 kills, and 1 death that was totally pathetic, but still awesome. So, next up is chapter 1-2. You get to save at the end of each and every chapter, which is really not necessary until you get to chapter 5, because when you get to chapter 5, the game actually no longer puts typewriter. I, for the first like four chapters of the game and every sub chapter, they always put a typewriter within one minute of the start of the next chapter. I don't know why they did it because it's really stupid. Maybe to, maybe for cutscene purposes, I don't know. Humans, let us give you our power. something? Nah, you don't look the type. Maybe. Okay, let me guess. She's the president's daughter? <laughs> That's too good for a guess. Wanna start explaining? Psychic powers. Nah, I'm just kidding with you, amigo. 
I overheard one of the villagers talking something about the president's daughter in the church. And who might you be? Me llamo Luis Serra. I used to be a cop in Madrid. But now I'm just a good-for-nothing guy who happens to be quite a ladies' man. <laughs> Why'd you quit? Phew, <laughs> policia. You put your life on the line. Nobody really appreciates you enough for it. Being a hero isn't what it's cracked up to be anymore. I used to be a cop myself. Only for a day, though. I thought I was bad. Somehow I managed to get myself involved with the incident in Raccoon City on my first day in the force. <laughs> that is the incident with the viral outbreak, right? I think I might have seen a sample of the virus in a lab at the department. <laughs> Controller down during this game's cutscenes. It's Leon. Sorry I couldn't get in touch sooner, but I was a bit tied up. You're okay, right? I'm fine. There was a male civilian held captive. According to him, Ashley's in a church somewhere. Well, what happened to him? He managed to escape. Do you have a fix on the location of that church? No, but apparently there's a secret passage in the village that leads there. I'm heading back to the village. Yes, never ever put your controller down during a cutscene. No matter how safe you think you are, like I said, this game throws a lot of quick time events at you, so you don't want to risk dying from a quick time event. Over here. Pedophile! Okay, we're here. See what I said before? Freaking typewriter. We're not going to use it just yet, though. I'll use it at the end of the video. Uh, what we want to do out here is, before we go through that door, we're in currently what's basically a safe zone. Uh, hit that. Let's get a green herb. Yeah, we don't really need to see that. We're going to be right in the middle of it in about next video. Back here! Got something that might interest you. <laughs> the merchant. Got a selection of... This is where you spend the money at. Ah, uh, don't worry about that what just yet. Boy, so this is where you spend the money at in the game. We are going to buy the village treasure map. <laughs> Thank you. But we are not going to buy anything else. He'll only, I don't know exactly what the conditions are that makes him sell first aid sprays. I think it depends on how many health items you currently have. We're not going to buy a rocket launcher because we don't exactly need one anytime soon. We're not going to buy a tump yet either. I will probably buy this rifle eventually, but I don't want it just yet because that's sort of a waste of money right now. I'm just going to keep what we have. We're also not going to buy the Attaché Case M because the Attaché Case L becomes available fairly soon. And it's just not really worth wasting the money on it. I found that out the hard way. Uh, you can also tune your weapons up, you know, upgrades. I would certainly suggest uploading the shotgun once. At least while you can, because we don't really need it. You do not want to upgrade the normal handgun at all, though. Unless you have a really cheap upgrade, like you know, capacity, and I am going to do that because we may need that. But we're going to be getting another handgun very soon, as he was implying, by shooting the 10 medallions, or technically we're going to shoot all 15 because it's worth an even better reward. Uh, actually, I want to combine this red herb with this green herb and use up an egg. Hmm, let's see. I, I need to reorganize just a little bit. You're going to see me being very OCD about that in this, is like my, if my inventory do doesn't look like exactly the way I want it to, it's just going to be like a problem. Yeah, like I am very OCD. You guys know that I'm kind of OCD, like if you've seen 
my house in the Fallout, in uh, Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, especially, like, with that house update, you guys know that I'm very OCD. Everything has to look exactly right or it won't do. And that is, for whatever reason, the way I am, I... I wouldn't call that a bad quality of myself, but I can be very OCD. Everything has to look right. Ah, that looks much more organized, but there's actually... Actually, I'll talk about that trick next video. So guys, next time we will progress on. See you guys then.